Hi, my name is Dr. Hamish Mears. I'm an anaesthetic doctor based in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia, and I'd like to introduce you to the spark vent. What you're looking here is a trace of the actual output of the ventilator, looking at flow, uh, volume, and pressure. Um, over here, you can see the test lung inflating and deflating. Um, moving across here is our setup of valves. We've essentially got three valves, uh, inspiratory, expiratory, and a mix valve um, with the electronics to control it. This is a very simple bellows made out of an anaesthetic uh, bag with just a weight to collapse it. And down here we have a bucket of water, which is how you set the maximum inspiratory pressure and the peak, just using a pipe inside a column of water. On top here you can see the port that we've made so you can scavenge the gases and any virus particles. Here is an overview of how the circuit works. Um, it's really relatively simple, just runs off uh, fresh gas flow off the wall that most hospital rooms uh, should have. And it relies primarily on gravity and basic physics to try and make the circuit as safe as possible. Here is our second prototype, which uses a simpler mechanism for the valves, which is just a 3D printed cam that squishes some silicon tubing. And we swap the bellows around for some piston bellows that give a slightly better indication for tidal volume. Um, here is our PEEP and maximum inspiratory pressure, and that is a negative pressure valve using the same system of adjustable uh, pipes inside a column of water. That's our fake lungs. There's uh, fresh gas flow coming in, and here is the energy requirements for that little electric motor, just 9 volts and 0 0.05 amps, so roughly half a watt. And here is our accumulator, which is just a PETG bottle, soda bottle. Here is a close-up of how the 3D cam valve works. It's just a couple of levers squishing some silicon tubes. Here is a diagram of how that second prototype works. Essentially, it, it differs because it uses an accumulator, and it also uses a piston bellows. Uh, it's very, very efficient and has a very, very simple uh, mechanism for determining the respiratory rate, which is just the RPM of the electric motor. Here is our first prototype again, a slightly improved version with some lovely bellows there supplied by the University of Newcastle's Department of Mechanical Engineering, which we are very grateful. Um, as you can see, it's the same system that you saw early in the system with a bucket and a series of valves. You can set the FiO2, the percentage of oxygen the patient's breathing, by setting the blend of oxygen and air off your flow meters coming off the wall. It comes through a T-piece, comes through that little mix valve that then opens and enables that gas to pass into uh, this anaesthetic bag, which is just a bog-standard uh, bag that you'd use in operating theatres that I use every day. Um, and it's designed specifically for ventilating patients, so I think it makes a great set of bellows. Um, that's all made out of, bellows are made out of acrylic um, and some stainless steel and that weight is adjustable um, to vary the amount of weight compressing the bag. It passes through this in valve. Um, these valves by the way are all industrial 20 volt, 24 volt DC um, being controlled by an Arduino and an industrial relay. This is the gases passing into the patient's lung through the inspiratory limb. You can see nice inflations there. And the pressures we're getting there are roughly sort of 30 centimeters with about 15 of peak. Um, traveling back out through the expiratory limb. Um, these circuits again are all just standard anesthetic circuits. Um, we've thrown in a maximum pressure pop-off valve that hopefully will never be used and a negative pressure valve in case the patient breathes and that's just a uh, hacked from a ladle ambi bag system. Um, there's maximum spiritual pressure and peep are those two pipes coming up there. They both pass through the same bucket. Um, the uh, maximum spiritual pressure is attached to a tube that's just deeper in the water than the peeps, so and you can vary the heights of those tubes, um, and that will vary uh, the pressures that you've got in your system. Um, uh, on the top there, you can also see the scavenger, which will go off to the wall and take any uh, source of gases out. Um, this uh, sets the respiratory rate, so you can vary the respiratory rate of the patient. So we've just uh, turned that up and increased the respiratory rate, and now the, vent the bellows are ventilating a lot faster. In the future iterations, we'll have a display demonstrating what the rest rate is. Um, that's obviously a little bit quick, so I'm just going to slow it down a little bit here. Um, this is just a simple potentiometer. At the moment, we're just running through an Arduino, but perhaps ideally it might be better through a PLC. So an industrial electronics, but the, the Arduino seems to be working pretty well actually. Um, we've got a little switch here that can switch um, from uh, ventilator mode to CPAP mode, 
And so when you flick across to your CPAP, um, just sort of flick at the switch, it opens up all the valves. Um, and so the system is completely open. The bellows are no longer ventilating, uh, but the pressure is maintained so around about 10 centimeters of peep. So if your patient was uh, breathing, this might be a way of delivering uh, just, a, just a bog standard uh, CPAP circuit. Um, I'm just going to flick it back on to uh, ventilate um, just to show you one other feature we've put in there, there. so if you're ventilating oops, there's the ventilator starting back up again if all of a sudden um, perhaps you might want to uh, suddenly stop uh, for whatever reason so you hit emergency stop and that immediately shuts down the system so all the valves uh, close and the system stops ventilating so for example if you're disconnecting and you your circuit from the patient and you didn't want uh, gases being blown and it's very easily set to switch it back on and the system sets up again. Um, and essentially that's pretty much it. Things we would like to add to it would be uh, some means of measuring tidal volume, but I believe the system could be used just for the end tidal CO2 and saturation monitor. So this is the spark vent. We'll keep on improving it as best we can. If you want more information, check out these websites or shoot us an email at info at sparkvent.org. And last, and definitely not least, I would like to give a big thanks to the SparkVent team who are a mixture of engineers, uh, doctors, and people that are going above and beyond to try and help. Stay safe. Thanks a lot.